Hello and welcome to another helping of a spoonful of history. Today we are going to be talking about the Byzantine Empire. It's important to understand and realize that the Byzantine Empire is nothing more than the Eastern Roman Empire. And in fact, it was called Nova Roma, which means New Rome. And because of time and geography, the Byzantine Empire will stand for another thousand years after the fall of the Western Roman Empire, as well as kind of take on a distinct flavor and culture of its own, creating a very distinct, more Greek rather than Roman culture. So first of all, let's start off with the idea is that the Eastern Roman Empire is Byzantium, is the Byzantine Empire. In fact, it was built on the site of the old Byzantine um, of old Byzantium and the capital city is renamed after Constantine and it's named Constantinople and that basically they be, uh, last for a thousand years after the Western Roman Empire falls because of its location it's surrounded on three sides by water and one side is a triple layer wall that was almost impenetrable we'll talk more about that later um, because of a great earthquake allowed them to um, let down a guard or cause them to let down their guard allowing the Ottoman Turks to actually come in and conquer the the Byzantine Empire but it becomes very very wealthy and very very powerful because it, it basically connects Asia and Europe in the trade routes it had secure harbors for boats and fishing boats and um, because of its geographic lo location was very difficult to invade it only really uh, was able to um, they had the gold horn chain which is um, we'll talk about later in acti in certain activities with um, the Byzantine Empire and achievements um, because it was an extension of the Western Roman Empire when Constantine and all that. Um, very early on, the um, the Constantinople or the Byzantine Empire was very much modeled after um, the Roman style of architecture: the aqueducts, the Colosseums, the Circus Maximus, the amphitheaters, um, the uh, um, other types of city planning streets and sewers and bathhouses but over time like I said because of geography and really time um, the Roman style will give way to a more Greek influence that will uh, subtly begin to change the culture of the Byzantine Empire that and because of the multiculturalism of the Byzantine Empire this blend of cultures will also change um, the the Byzantine Empire. It will add a lot of um, great things to the empire, but it will also create a lot of problems with the empire. In fact, Justinian um, was almost overthrown because of a large rebellion, mainly due to taxes and confusing laws. If it wasn't for his wife telling him to man up and to put down the the Nike rebellion, um, he we probably wouldn't be studying the Byzantine Empire. But because of his wife Theodora, he basically invited all of the different parties involved to um, to the amphitheater to um, to discuss the issues and he had the doors sealed and basically they were slaughtered ending the rebellion and um, keeping Justinian in power so basically as time passed the Byzantine Empire became less Roman and more Greek is the correct answer. Which of the following describes the Byzantine civilization? Again, I would hope you go straight to D. It was formed by a blend of several cultures. Now, Emperor Justinian. Justinian came, he, he's actually Serbian, Eastern European, and he becomes the ultimate ruler of the Byzantine Empire, which is really kind of crazy because he came from a very lowly peasant birth, um, and he steadily rose through the ranks and became the ultimate emperor. And at his side was his wife, Theodora, who too was from a very different childbirth. Her father was a bear trainer. She was a dancer and an entertainer and actress. Um, so both of them were very unlikely as rulers, but they both um, became co-rulers in a way. Um, Theodora greatly counseled and advised Justinian, and um, he ruled with an iron fist, and his law was supreme, and nobody was there to, to second-guess him or they would be killed. 
Theodora, being very forward thinking, convinced her husband to give women some rights. At this time, in most the Byzantine Empire, most of the world, women had very little rights. But because of Theodora, women were able to have property rights um, that when their husbands died, they were able to inherit property and hold property, which was a significant change in, in civilization at that time. And Justinian basically wanted to make the Byzantine Empire great again. And so he, with the help of his trusted general um, Belisarius, he sought out to conquer all the lost land of the Western Roman Empire. The only problem is he conquered it too quickly and when he died it was not enough money or resources to maintain a large enough army to keep that empire. So the, whatever gains that he did make will slowly be eroded. Empress Theodora helped A. The theater prosper B. Destroy the Byzantine Empire C. Women gain more rights and D. Rome become prosperous again The answer, hopefully, you got is C. So, the Empress Theodora um, like I said, was a great influence on Justinian and Justinian thought that the laws and um, rules of the Byzantine Empire was too complex, too confusing, so he looked to basically reform, to simplify law um, in basically in all avenues of life, um, social, interpersonal, uh, business, and he wanted to make laws simpler, easy to understand, and easy to follow. And these laws, and hence the word justice actually comes from Justinian. Um, these influence laws throughout Europe as the European Western civilization begins to develop. Justinian wanted to A. Reform the law code, B. Further limit women's rights, C. Reunite the Roman Empire, or is it D. Both A and C? I hope you guys got D. Both A and C. The Byzantine Church. Now as the Eastern Roman Empire becomes more Greek, um, there is a power struggle between the church and the state and the government. And you have to understand, even though the Western Roman Empire fell politically, the Roman Catholic Church still maintained its power. And in fact, the Franks and other Germanic tribes became Christian, became Roman Catholic Christians. Um, and there is a power struggle between the East and the West because the church is led by the Pope. Okay, And in fact, Catholic means universal. It's the universal Christian church. But the Orthodox Church is born in the Byzantine Empire, and Orthodox means correct belief. And like I said, they say it's a lot to do with icons and the way the Catholic Church was worshipping, but really it had to do with power, because basically the church in the East was led by a patriarch, not a pope, but a patriarch. And that patriarch was chosen by the emperor, where the pope is chosen by and, and all intents and purposes, God, the emperor chooses the patriarch of the Byzantine church. So there's really in the east no separation between church and state, where in the west there is a clear separation of church and state. And in the east, the Orthodox believe that the emperor was a representation of Jesus on earth, and so um, him establishing and uh, appointing a patriarch would be valid and the emperor pretty much controlled both the government and the church in the byzantine empire the emperor did what a controlled the church took orders from the pope obeyed church leaders or always helped defend italy the right answer would be a so this leads to a debate over icons and what icons are are religious objects and you have one group that the west and um, who believed in many who actually lived in the byzantine empire at the time that believed icons were an important religious um, tool to help um, 
make an emotional connection and further understand the word of God and the relationship of man with God. However, there were a large group of people that believed that these icons were no more than graven images or idols that were being worshipped. And so was born a group of people called the iconoclasts, um, people who wanted to break these icons and destroy these icons. So the Byzantine Empire and the Orthodox Church under Emperor Leo III outlawed these icons and began to basically um, destroy them and, um, and burn them and the Catholic Church pretty much disagreed with it and this is going to cause the East and the Western Church to basically break ties. Part of it was also because the Catholic Church in the West was having some issues with invading troops in the Eastern church wasn't helping them and really the German Franks were the ones helping the Roman Empire so inevitably this creates this big split called the schism that will divide the Eastern and the Western Church even to this day in Eastern Orthodox Church icons were once forbidden always against the religious law never important always protected the answer is a always forbidden, who once forbidden. So the Catholic Church. At this time you had the Pope who said he is the head of the church, right? Of the Roman Catholic Church and he did not recognize the rise of the Eastern Orthodox Church. While the Byzantines said, hey, it's the patriarch and the bishops, they're equal to the Pope and they're appointed by the Emperor, they are in charge of the church. So because neither churches defended each other when they were attacked by foreign invaders, um, this led the patriarch and the pope to basically excommunicate or um, dissolve any ability of being saved and going to heaven. So it's basically like they fired each other. And this creates the two, the split in the church that still exists today between the Eastern Orthodox and the Roman Catholic Church. So Byzantine civilization, because of the Byzantine civilization, because of its geographic location on the Bosphorus, um, linking really Asia with Europe, um, and because of its stronghold with the triple layer wall and protected on all three sides and the golden horn chain that protected the harbors, it, al it allowed the Byzantine Empire, allowed really the stop of the expansion of Eastern civilization, of Islamic civilization, and, and other things. And really, many would say that the Byzantine Empire really helped preserve and protect Western civilization, Christianity in and of itself, as well as, as, well as um, Western thought of law, separation of church and state, and other things that will become very popular in the Enlightenment and Age of Reason. They become incredibly rich due to trade, and one of the biggest things that the Byzantine Empire is very well known for is silk and tapestry. Um, at this time, most people were farmers and herders and laborers and artisans. They were businessmen, right? They weren't terribly interested in in world affairs, but because of this, the industry in silk weaving made them incredibly wealthy and powerful. Which of the following was a major Byzantine industry? Concrete, mining, weapon making, or silk weaving? The correct answer is, I hope you guys all got it, silk weaving. The Hagia Sophia is another important accomplishment and really it is a, a, a really good example of the culmination of the togetherness of all these different cultures of the East and the West um, when it comes to architecture that you see that you have Greek and Roman style combined to create this beautiful religious center that um, was built in the time of Justinian. Um, it will become a Christian church, a mosque, and now a museum. Um, because graven images were and religious images were considered bad, um, the use of mosaics or broken tile and glass um, pieces to create beautiful um, paintings of Justinian, Theodora, and other important significant political um, leaders of 
of the time period were became very very popular uh, women's rights the idea of property ownership and stuff like that um, are a big significance and influence um, before women were expected to stay at home take care of the family had very little rights and still even after Theodora that was expected of women however um, women were able to serve as regents or or advisors to the government as well as to own land education was incredibly important to the Byzantines the um, and because of that education um, and widespread education among the masses especially boys was an important facet of the Byzantine Empire and a major accomplishment and influence within the Byzantine Empire to the Western Rome um, to the West um, and because there was better education and they were more literate um, many works of the ancient Greeks and the Romans and even Islamic civilizations were translated and copied and preserved and because of that when Europe went into the Dark Ages and much of the world was engaged in warfare in many of these um, these relics um, are destroyed the Byzantine Empire was able to protect them and keep them um, from being destroyed because of their defenses and in their strong position there on the Bosphorus and because of the Byzantines we know more about the Greeks and the Romans and other ancient civilizations if it wasn't for the Byzantine Empire and their stress on education as well as their ability to to build that triple wall and, and being protected on three sides by water um, much of what we know now would have been lost to the ages that is the last in the end of the Byzantine Empire I hope you enjoyed our helping of a spoonful of history feel free to listen to this again um, for a second time to help you study for the test um, and we will go further into the significance of the Byzantine Empire and how it helped save Western civilization when we do our document based question um, as well as some of the major accomplishments when we do our activities um, like making a, a monument um, until next time have a great day.